Live from New York, it's The Cube, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your host, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. You, we are live in New York City with SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE, and my co-host, George Gilbert, Wikibon's big data analyst. Our next guest is CUBE alumni, Lawrence Schwartz, Chief Marketing Officer at Tunity. Welcome back. It's like our sixth year you've been on The Cube. Congratulations. You've been every, it's like, it's like you're a guest analyst now. We got to <laughs> keep you into The Cube. Uh, always great perspective, good to see you. Always a pleasure to be on here and hear what's going on. So. And we have a little surprise, a little virtual reality at the end, so stay, keep watching, you'll see what we're going to show at the end. Um, great, great attunity traction over the years, you guys have been successful, um, and you've been swimming in the sea of noise out there, obviously the Hadoop ecosystem has sure. been very noisy, certainly the growth is there, a lot of new announcements, a lot of new innovations, but now the theme here this week is the rubber hitting the road, put some meat on the bone, Mike Olson's up on stage at the keynote saying, it's about the outcomes and solutions, which is like code word for, you better start booking revenue, guys, or you do not have value in your products. Sure, absolutely. So that's what we're hearing from across the board, unanimous, that it's time to make some money, that's a proxy for your value. Right. You guys have been doing some successful work with customers, so yeah. you know, everyone wants to know, not on the geek side, but on the practitioner, I am going to deploy Hadoop in conjunction with other ecosystem stuff. Exactly, yeah. What is the story? What's going on? What is on the top conversations for the enterprise customers? Sure, so you know, what we focus on at Attunity is helping customers in a number of areas that really help uh, folks in the Hadoop realm. One is you got to think about you know, your legacy systems, right? Your systems of record, all these uh, existing Oracle uh, databases and data warehouses, all the existing stuff you might have on Teradata, all these other systems that are not going anywhere anytime soon. They're going to be a part of the, the new ecosystem. Um, so you have to think about how you combine that, how do you get, I think as George has written, the systems of intelligence, right, and get more value out of it. So customers are, you know, thinking about that as a, how to think about how to deploy Hadoop. So we have solutions that help you kind of mix the two, kind of come up with the optimal solutions, both for balancing where you put the workloads, figuring out what makes sense to go where. Uh, in the process, that uh, enables customers we know who have lots of data uh, migrate over to parts of uh, Hadoop where they want to and where they need to, uh, and so we give them solutions for that. Um, and it's not just small test cases, you know, we've seen that over the past years, and as you were mentioning, we've really seen kind of the need for the enterprise solution. So when I talk about the enterprise solution, just to give you some examples, you know, we have customers who, um, you know, a large bank, right, where they've got a large existing uh, data warehouse, and, um, they know that they want to kind of cap the growth of that. They don't want that to grow anymore, but they still have more information coming into it. So they're trying to figure out how can I uh, keep that at a certain level and then you know, what do I start building out on Hadoop to take advantage of some of the cost points. Uh, so for that, we can help customers go in there, look inside their actual data warehouse and figure out you know, what's really being used, how often and when, kind of look for the hot and cold data, if you will, and we give really good visibility with our so-called visibility product on what's happening you know, to the different business lines as well. So you can see if finance is claiming they're going in there and using it, are they really fully using it, um, marketing, other departments, production. So you have that really good insight into what's happening in your current environment, and then you can make really intelligent decisions about what do I want to offload and, and whatnot. So that's one area. Uh, and then we've continued to uh, expand that solution set. Now we've gotten to the point, we have some customers who have put so much on Hadoop, we have a customer now who um, has six petabytes on Hadoop, major online travel company, right? At that point, um, you start looking at this, and this can't just be a single data lake, right, for a customer. You have to start thinking about this like you would with any type of data warehouse or enterprise environment. How do I start tiering that, right? How do I put you know, the more valuable workloads on uh, some, some processors that have more compute power, some nodes that have more compute power, some faster storage, and then set up several tiers, maybe archival tiers. So we've expanded our solutions, and that's one of the things we're talking about at the show, is we've taken that visibility product, which gave people great insight into their existing data warehouses, and add that capability to large Hadoop data lakes and going in there and figuring out what's going on. Okay, so this is kind of interesting in the sense that um, we know running costs, we know capital costs for like the Hadoop platform per terabyte, yeah. and for the data warehouses per terabyte, um, roughly on the order of like maybe 2,000 a terabyte, yeah. on the Hadoop side up to 
25, 35,000 terabyte on the data warehouse. Yeah. Have you uh, been able to guess or estimate the running costs uh, of the two platforms? You know, with all the admin mixed in and. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know we we you know we certainly see those you know ten to one disparities that yeah. you've mentioned. I think it um, from what we hear from customers, oftentimes it could be smaller than that, right? When you add in all the training, all the operational support, um, it might be a couple of x or four or five x or something like okay. that. So um, in practice, it might not be so uh, uh, dramatic. But once they have the skill set and once they've kind of you know gotten over the Hadoop hump, if you will, right? Then that that becomes easier to deal with. So okay. So talk about the buyer side of it. I want to get yeah. back into the consumption. Yeah. You know, we always talk about this in the cloud business. It's pretty easy now to kind of get a handle on the right. directional path for cloud. Public cloud, you right. go to Amazon, Azure's trying to put some stuff out there. That kind of has a hybrid cloud. Private cloud and on-premise, sure. and then hybrid's the engineering solution of both. Mm -hmm. Is there some clarity around big data consumption that you're seeing um, with customers? And can you be specific on how they're buying? Sure, sure. Well, we see, um, you know, when you look at the cloud, and we have a lot of customers who do that as well. We have strong partnerships with uh, AWS and uh, Zor and whatnot. So, um, you know, we see that uh, uh, the buying behavior and what they're using with the cloud for is uh, along the lines of, um, you know, they want to kind of spin up some easy to run analytics, right? So like on AWS, it might be Redshift. Um, and it might start at the department level, right? So there's a much lower barrier to entry from some smaller department that just wants to start and get going, and that's where they'll kind of start looking at, at using that. Um, oftentimes, that's good enough, they'll stay there, but then they look at the economics of scaling that out, and you know, the hourly cost, and if it gets really big, then it's a decision of, hey, I might want to bring this on-prem. Um, but we see that, that need for uh, self-serve, right? You know, kind of starting up in different departments and then getting going. We saw that first with our cloud customers, and that's the other thing that we're now enabling too with our Replicate solution, which lets people move over data and keep it in sync. Uh, the other thing we're announcing at the show is we have a, an express version of it. So that uh, lets customers in a department start easily, um, download it, get going, um, and then have alternatives, particularly in like the Hadoop world, to scoop to get going. Um, and so we're trying to enable those types of uses. So what's your take on the overall ecosystem? What's your personal, as an industry uh, yeah. participant, put your analyst hat on, sure, uh, yeah. not your opportunity hat. What is your, what is your reaction uh, to what's happening in this, this year's show? Sure, well I, I see um, you know, the show is just starting up. We see a lot of noise, kind of some of the announcements I know coming out now. So uh, you know, Hadoop, I think you were talking about earlier, you see the enterprise, you know, how do you make that an enterprise version? I think people are also starting to talk more about you know, how to stream in different sources. You know, the Internet of Things people have been talking about for a while, but I think you're seeing more and more solutions on that and people are, are going beyond the typical ways they pull in data into a data warehouse. They're trying to figure out how to make things more real time into Hadoop or leveraging Spark. So we kind of see that happening. So I think there's going to be some excitement there over the years. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, these, um, you know, these systems of record, if you will, are not going anywhere. So people always have to figure out how to coexist with them. Um, and that's where I think some of the opportunities are, at least opportunities for companies like us, is you've really got to figure out how to merge what you have with what's uh, going forward. It's your, you, the, the way you position of systems of record is not really going anywhere is interesting because, yeah. I mean, we see that as the plumbing for the systems of intelligence. Absolutely. The, the question I have is, do you have to do a different performance profiling for the systems of record? to yeah. understand, or the, at least the, you know, the data warehouse or the analytic part of it, right. to see that they perform to the level that's required for sure. their systems of intelligence. Yeah, no, you, you absolutely. I mean, part, the first part of this, um, of any of this, when you migrate over, turn into a modern data architect, and you're having kind of a mixed system like this, is you really got to assess um, you know, what's going on and, uh, and what's working. So we work with some of the big system integrators, and that's the first part of their services, is an assessment that they do of their existing environments to kind of see what's going on, where the opportunities are, what's working and what's not. So that's absolutely kind of a precursor to it. Um, and we do that, we do that some interesting ways in the technology. You're looking at all the queries, all the asks that go into a, a data warehouse, and you're doing a, you know, parsing of that and semantic parsing to really understand how's it being used, um, under what circumstances, and even before you change it, you might go in there and see that, boy, some of these queries aren't optimized, they're taking up a lot of resources, even before you add anything, there's a whole lot of homework you might do just to kind of optimize your existing performance. Um, and then you could, at that point, figure out, do I need to optimize it further? Do I need to move it somewhere else? Some people might move it from an existing data warehouse to another tier data warehouse, or they might then move it to Hadoop. Um, and then, as I mentioned now, we're getting to that extreme case of 
petabytes on Hadoop and you got to figure out how to manage that as well. So what's the real reason why customers are buying from you guys? Why are you guys winning? Can you narrow yeah. it down to some specifics, some simple sure. example of an, and comment? Absolutely, yeah. So it's a few things that, that really uh, kind of help us, uh, help our customers. Uh, one is if you look at what people do today, like in the Hadoop world to kind of get started and going, you've got to get the data in from somewhere, right? So they might use a tool like Scoop, right, to get started and move it in. And that's a very um, developer driven, you know, it's set up for a sandbox environment, um, difficult to use, doesn't keep things in sync well, right? So there's kind of some initial tools that people can use to kind of get started, um, but they're not really enough to be, you know, the enterprise level that we're talking about, right, for an enterprise wide deployment. So they're looking and they crave these solutions that are much easier to use um, to really handle their data for batch loading, for change data capture. Uh, and that's where Replicate comes in and really differentiates and sets itself apart. Very easy to use, very uh, good to get going. And uh, that's been the case when we do it for databases, data warehouses on the cloud, and you know, in the last few years with Hadoop as well. So that's one area is, is making that uh, real bulletproof. And we see customers who otherwise, without a tuning, they would take you know, uh, DBA's worth of time for a couple of you know, weeks or months. They come in, they can use Replicate and do this all within a few hours. So that's one area. And then the other is, um, as we were talking about earlier, just really getting that visibility in what's going on to environments. A lot of the tools that give you uh, visibility into a data warehouse or a Hadoop environment, they're really uh, geared towards the DBA, right? They're kind of technical tools, they don't, you know, and, and they're really for debugging kind of performance. We really give you a business-wide view across the entire data warehouse, so a business user can come in and see what's happening, you know, for their environment, where the issues are, where the growth is, where the opportunities to move are, and we make it very easy to kind of dive in and out graphically and, and see what's happening. You, you know, we, we did a, we just completed a, a very comprehensive survey of 300 par practitioners, uh, just got the results back uh, last week. Mm -hmm. We're still sort of, we've tabulated them, but we've still got to organize all the answers. Yeah. One of the things we found out was that for a, a majority of the respondents, mm -hmm. the data warehouse certainly wasn't going away. It was sort of being, maintained roughly exactly. at its current size. Mm -hmm. And Hadoop was you know, capturing some, but n not all the, gro the growth. Is that what you're seeing? We're seeing some customers who, who definitely want to do that, right? They have a large uh, instance of a, of a data warehouse, um, and they want to kind of cap you know, the, the growth of that and look for alternatives. Um, and we see that you know, uh, across our environments. We see that you know, for a couple of different data warehouses. We even see people uh, talking about that we have solutions for even SAP, and people think of that in the same way. If I want, how do I cap my SAP growth? Um, so yeah, that's absolutely, people are looking for ways to, to, to cap what they have, and then how do they build out what the, the new solutions that can give them different points. And, and when they're capping yeah. their SAP growth, yeah. are you talking about the, because in their case, HANA started out as their, underneath their data warehouse, right. but now they're trying to essentially combine the, op the operational system and, and the analytics yeah. in one database. Mm -hmm. are, are you monitoring performance on that? Because that's an interesting use case where the, you know, the world is moving towards integration yeah. of the operational app and the analytics. Right. And I'm curious if that's sort of the canary in the coal mine, yeah. what does that look like and are you seeing it elsewhere? So what we've seen on the SAP side, we have a, a different set of solutions, one called uh, Goal Client, and uh, what helps you manage the SAP landscape. And what we started uh, doing there was we have a uh, relationship with, uh, with uh, HP um, to help people archive off of that. So that becomes an absolute use case, and that's where you talk about uh, large systems that they realize, like take a bank that has to do a you know, seven year plus archive of all their data. They don't necessarily need to keep that all on SAP. They might need to keep um, you know, the archive there. They might need to access it at some point, but if we can help pull that information off, in their case, put it to an HP archive, you know, that, that works, that meets the regulatory requirements, it kind of sets up a different environment. So um, conceptually, it's similar to what we see on some of the data warehouse and Hadoop sides. Okay, Okay. got to ask you, we are in our yeah. virtual reality space here. Uh, what are these things you're giving away? I want to show the folks out there. This is a, an Attunity branded Oculus Rift, cardboard version, <laughs> iPhone in the inside, which exactly. is really cool. Yeah. So I'm looking at this, and I'm pointing around, there's a little thing in the middle there, Yeah. and it says I can pull the trigger on a start button. They just stare at the start button and you're on your journey. So what is this, are you guys giving these away at the booth? What's yeah, going on yeah, with these come, guys? Yeah, come by at the booth. Uh, we've got these great little uh, uh, Google Cardboard uh, apps here. 
Um, you can use your own phone in it, Hold Android. The oh, there we go, Android, and um, you've got iPhone as well. Uh, either one, just download the app from the store. Um, and it's a lot of fun, you can go in there. What, what we're trying to show is here, look, you know, people have large data lakes, they're often becoming a data swamp, right? So how do you get visibility into that? How do you get clarity out of it? So this takes you on the viewpoint of the data, you know, going through a journey, migrating over to where it needs to go, all the issues you uh, come across. And it's kind of fun and entertaining, you know, so um, come by, we've got these to, to give out. We have it online uh, as well, if you can download the app and uh, have some fun with the uh, Tunity. You know, it's and all about having fun with data, so. And just so give the plug for what, what's going on at the booth down at the show. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So um, we've got a booth uh, over at the uh, show. We'll be there, uh, you know, for the whole experience. Uh, later today, we have uh, one of my colleagues, Rodan, uh, giving uh, a talk as well, talking about the uh, different things you need to think about when uh, managing and moving data, so he'll be uh, giving a talk. Um, but yeah, we'd love to hear you. Come right. by and uh, tell us what's going Opportunity on. Opportunity inside the cube, and remember tonight at seven o'clock Eastern, you're going to see. Uh, I mean, five o'clock Eastern from five to seven, live presentation. George will be giving his research and party after. More, more than welcome to come by. I appreciate it. Uh, we are live here in New York City for Strata plus Hadoop and our event, Big Data NYC. Here, one block, hundred yards from the Javits Center. Uh, we're on the ground, getting all the data and sharing with you is real time, in the moment, live. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>